Hi guys, welcome back to another Auto Terra Firmacraft episode. In between episodes, I've been chopping a lot of wood. So this huge pile here is all sycamore logs, which I want to use for the yeah, big house that is planned for the day. So that will be a focus of the episode. Yeah, another focus for me right now is to get something to drink. There we go. And also something to eat. My health points have never been this low, only 490 now. Lately, the only food I got was pretty much uh, eating the grain from last year. But you can also quickly check in the crops. It seems like pretty much everything has grown again. So you can see the pumpkins. I think I'm just going to harvest those pumpkins. They do actually destroy the farmland. Yes, okay. Another reason to use the hoe again. Um, I'm pretty sure the pumpkin plants here work like in vanilla, so there's a chance they will grow another pumpkin. So I'll leave those out. So harvest the other plants real quick. So there's actually a lot of them. All of them I think are ready. There wasn't a huge difference between uh, planting them in a row or in a big field. So I don't think the vanilla mechanic applies really. I was wondering about that in a previous episode. Then also that one shoot plant we fertilized grew a little bit quicker, but yeah, there's even nothing to change in regards to the yield multiplier here. You can see this was actually a good farmland here. Lots of phosphor, but yeah, not really worth it. All the effort putting like 32 items in a compost that I have to harvest first, to just slightly increase the, the, the growth speed of one plant. Uh, yeah, it's only for, I think, like special plants that you really want badly. Okay, then time to actually harvest. I think the scythe would be best here. Oh yeah. Definitely good to have this tool. It's got two onion plants. And this is gonna completely fill the inventory in no time. Okay, I think I actually gotta bring back some of this stuff. I was also thinking, it's the time of the year. It's July. I think I planted the seeds like three months ago, so in April. This will be the next month, this is August, September, October. Might be still warm enough. So we could maybe try to get a second harvest. I guess it's worth a try to immediately plant the seeds again. So this was a really good first harvest. I got over 60 sugarcane, 28 carrots, but I probably made a mistake. I had some green bean seeds and I should also be able to grow. I should have really checked if all the crops are mature. I guess I missed out on the green beans. They weren't quite ready yet. So I planted the seeds again. Hopefully the next time I'll pay a bit more attention. But apart from those, I think everything else has grown. So we got a really good amount of jute, over 100. Probably also over 100 of the you know, grain here. Kinda would be nice to have a couple more vegetables. So I only got the carrots now. I guess I'm gonna eat a lot of grain or bread next. Uh, because we got so much of that. But usually it's also good to feed the animals. But apart from that, we're really low on yeah, any protein right now. That's what, yeah, the olives are rotten. A little bit of sugar cane and pumpkins from last year, but since they don't really give you any nutrition or vegetable value, I think it's mostly just grains we have here right now. Okay, then let's store away. Maybe the stuff from this year in the vessels here in the back. I guess I'm not even sure what I should do with the sugar cane. Uh, you can make a sugar cane sandwich. I don't think that would be nice. Hmm. The only thing you, if you can make is sugar out of the sugar cane. But why would I even need that? Is there anything I can make of sugar? We can maybe try to make a cake later. There's also a terra firma craft recipe. But I'm also not sure what kind of nutritional value we get from it. Oh, that's actually neat. A pumpkin pie recipe. Pumpkins? Eggs. We should really get some chickens or the ducks or something like that. Okay. But we got way too much sugar. I mean, the other thing I can make is paper out of it. But right now I'm also not too sure what paper is useful for. Sandpaper? I guess we should just you know, convert the sugar cane into paper. Maybe we'll need it later. So, I'm gonna keep plant the seeds. We have enough farmland. You can also now finally make the quern. I was actually a little bit wrong about this. You don't need two different types of stone. You only need 
um, raw stone at the bottom and smooth stone at the top. I was a bit confused because there was some vanilla stone types in there and so on. Uh, but I should have actually just read the book. <laughs> Everything is explained there. The base of the quern can be crafted with three smooth stone and three of any other stone blocks. Okay. It also shows you how you can use it. Then we need the handstone here on top as well. And then we can grind down you know, certain things like grain into flour or sulfur into sulfur powder. Uh, a lot of yeah, flowers into dye. Yeah, there's a lot of recipes. Also here, the, the clam into flux, although the hammer is also a good tool for that. Okay, so let's finally make it. One quern. Yep, there we go. And one handstone. Sweet. Okay, I can place it down here. Okay, there it is. All right, I think I just need to click took the whole stack and I can rotate it. Okay, now we got one flower. But this is actually such a slow process, it's gonna take a while. Don't think I'm gonna, gonna do it very often because there's also a create mod alternative and we can actually get into this. Um, there is the mill, the millstone. That only requires a bit of, what is this even, raw stone, I guess. Not entirely sure about the stone type, hopefully we have that. One plank and one cock, so it's not even that expensive. But of course we also need a source of power, so we could easily use a hand crank. So again, something manual to power this. Or we could also make a water wheel, which isn't too expensive either. Just slabs and a large cock wheel, which is a shaft and some planks and try to yeah, make it automatic. I'm nevertheless gonna grind up the, the last of the grain here so we can yeah, make a little bit of bread. So I have 17 flour. Now I just need a little bit of water. And it's probably best if we go to a crafting table. Then we can make a lot of dough. Okay, but we always need a new water bucket. There we go. And I got one left. Bit of a waste of water. It also takes the full bucket. Okay, so sorry for dough. Now we just need to cook it. Now I know there's actually a benefit of cooking the meat in the fire pit, but I'm not sure if this also applies. We could maybe try to, yeah, cook the bread in the charcoal forge. Might actually be detrimental though. Okay, let's just. But the benefit is we could at least put uh, five in at a time. That would be a lot less effort. Imagine we have to click it 34 times with the, the fire pit. It'd be quite annoying. Let's just turn this on. But we could actually compare it. So let's put in some dough here. See how long this will last. And let's get a lock here really quick too. See how it compares if it's worth it. Oh, broke it somehow. Okay. Um, I don't want to put it into the, the pot. But does this also work? That would be actually amazing. Uh, that's like something I haven't even considered yet. If this would work, this would be nice. Okay, but let's see. This might also heat up quicker here. The bread is already finished. There you go. And yeah, it lasts one month and three days. So really no point now converting all the grain we have into bread because it usually doesn't have a long durability. Makes sense if you think about the, the real life uh, bread as well. Last a day. <laughs> okay, but here it goes really quick. That's something else I came across recently when I looked through the, the hotkeys. Um, if you press I, it would actually stack your food as well. You don't need to use the crafting table even. Okay, this also turned off already. Oh, those locks don't last a long time. Okay, let's try to turn it on again. Sticks. Really wondering if this might work. I'm not even sure, can I 
Take the pot, okay. <laughs> right click, I'm just gonna burn myself. Not a good idea. We have a lot of those locks anyway. Let's see. Okay, yeah, then we can also make sandwiches now, finally. Uh, I just don't have any meat or fish or something nice. Can eat a carrot sandwich. <laughs> Doesn't sound great, but I think it gives a good nutritional value. So we need uh, a knife again. Then put one bread bottom and top. Three carrots and a knife. And here's our carrot sandwich. That's actually pretty decent. So we're now at 445, so really low. Yeah, that's gonna get us back up nicely, 517. But we're gonna eat this a couple times more. So baking bread in a pot definitely seems like a failure. Doesn't work. Okay, let's see here. Did work in the fire pit. And it lasts one month and six days. It's longer than this one here. Oh god, so it would be actually encouraged to do it in here, but I feel like... This is a bit too boring. There's also a grill. Making bread on a grill. That might work. But this requires iron sheets. So we're not quite there yet. It's definitely even better than just using a normal fire pit for um, meat. I'm not sure if it also accepts you know, the dough. Now that I think about it, probably not. But one of the yeah, upsides of using the, the raw iron grill is actually you can put five pieces of meat on it at the same time, so similar to the pot. So I'm also really looking forward to, to getting that. Okay, then I think I'm just gonna convert the rest of the dough in, in the charcoal forge. Those couple of days also don't matter too much. Oh, I also need a bit of charcoal. There we go. And this goes real quick. I think I'm just gonna stack it up. This advantage doesn't help me too much. We can't even stack it up. Oh, because it's different. It has the charcoal grilled advantage. The bread gave me enough energy to dig away a lot of blocks. Actually broke two couple shovels and yeah, made an outline for my house. So the rough idea right now is here we're gonna have an area for some forging, toolsmithing and so on. Um, it's gonna be a bit larger because there's gonna be an expansion. Later we can make a bloomery and a blast furnace. It already requires a lot of space. There should also be a little bit of storage. So. It was roughly yeah, a 20 by 15 area to have in mind for this. I think we're definitely gonna need this. Then yeah, over here I want to make a kitchen. Then I think it'd be nice to have our chests here on this side. Could have an entrance here and maybe a back entrance uh, next to the kitchen. Yes, there we could also store our logs in front of the house. Um, yeah, for this space here on the right, I don't have an idea yet, but this probably be, uh, be something that we have to place there. And over here, I want to have a crate mod area. But I think I can already tell this is a bit too small even. I probably need to expand this maybe 10, 15 blocks in that direction even. Okay, but I think I'm just gonna get started now. And yeah, the idea is now I put in a yeah, floor out of planks, but I was thinking I could actually just use slabs instead to save on uh, building blocks a little bit. It's gonna require a lot. So, get all the sycamore logs, should be enough. Almost all of the floor got placed, and I'm just missing at yeah, this wing here on the side, but I ran out of saw durability. Only 40 left, and I couldn't make the remaining slabs even. Uh, unfortunately, I also just removed the setup yeah, to make a new one, and I'm completely out of charcoal. So we need to take care of this later. But it would actually be nice to give this a bit more structure first and put in the outline of the walls at least. But yeah, the cobble which we got from mining last time wouldn't be a good block because it's a gravity block. So it would just collapse on us. But what we can do, it's probably the cheapest way to get a lot of blocks, is to make bricks. So if you look at the recipe, we need... Yeah, so this is just for that side, but it's the same recipe for every stone type. We need those bricks, which we can get by chiseling the smaller rocks. Okay, so we need, this is a one for one. Um, yeah, out of five of those bricks, we would get four 
of the big bricks. So that's actually a good trade. The only thing we need to add is mortar. So here we need to put some sand and lime water. Still got plenty of lime water left and we only need 100 milli buckets for 16 mortar. Yeah, there's also another advantage of settling right next to the ocean. You got beaches everywhere. So I was thinking I'm just gonna pick a beach that is maybe a little bit further away. I was thinking about this one here and get sand from there. Don't wanna ruin the one yeah, right next to the base. Okay, so just a small journey. Gotta get some sand and then we can make the mortar. So I already broke another shovel again. Got a lot of sand already. And I think I did a good job. Didn't even ruin this beach. Still looks okay. All right, let's make some mortar. Let's put the sand in here into the lime water. Oh, it's actually gonna take a while again. Always just waiting. Um, would it make sense if I actually use another barrel? So I actually saved a little bit of durability for the saw, so we can at least make some smaller things. Let's make another barrel. And I'm just gonna bucket the lime water over, then we can yeah, use two barrels at a time. Okay, that is a willow barrel. That looks kinda neat. Oh, even had some lumber left. Yeah, would have been fine. Uh, the bucket, there we go. So we need a hundred milli bucket. A piece of sand. So just gonna split this up 50-50, I guess. This is actually interesting. I was already wondering, how did I, did I get rum? I didn't want to make it. But I completely forgot that I actually wanted to make some sugar. In order to do that, you need to soak the sugar cane in water. So I sealed this and completely forgot about it. Left it in there and it turned into rum. Um, I think this can be used later to make some vinegar. I think you can also drink it. So I tried to find it, but it might have actually been removed. You can't drink alcohol in this game. Remember in 1.7 Terra Firmacraft, you could actually fill bottles with uh, rum, beer, vodka, whatever. And you got some effects if you drank it, like speed one or so for 30 seconds, something like that. But it seems like this has been removed. Okay, then let's make the mortar. I'm just gonna seal the sand and wait a little bit. So while waiting for the mortar to finish, I can at least stick up the charcoal from the Kapok forest. That should be finished now. Oh yeah, it's a really good amount. Almost one and a half stacks, so that's nice. Riding around a bit also has advantage of finding good food again. And here I found soybean for the first time. I think this could be actually really good. Because that gives you, yeah, nutrition value for vegetables and protein. You definitely want to pick up that. I'm wondering, can we make it a soybean sandwich? See? Yeah. And it gives you grain, vegetables and protein. That's actually OP food here. Really good. That was a good find. Okay, now I can get my inventory flooded with mortar. I think you should get like 512 out of this. Yeah, 8 stacks in total. And then also one of the other one. Yeah, that's plenty. So I already made those bricks. Now we can... Oh, we should also make some aqueducts. Something we need later anyway. Um, a whole stack. We it's actually quite expensive. Let's make some normal bricks first. Does this only give us 64? No, no, it's gonna be 256. Never mind. Okay, that's actually a decent amount. Yep. And also a bit of death side. Alright. Then I can start off the walls. And I'm already out of building blocks. So that was quick. Got a little bit of structure in there, but it's actually not a lot. Um, my chisel right now is the same issue as the saw. It's out of durability. We should probably focus on maybe finishing a room first before we think about the whole house. Um, so the forging room it is at first. So the idea is here we're gonna have the, the bloomery area. Space for two, maybe even three. Let's see about that. Then yeah, here we're gonna have a, a charcoal forge, or even two. And here we're gonna have the blast furnace. And I was thinking here we have a chest storage. One more thing. But maybe have an extra room here on the side where we store our ingots. 
And that's about it. Um, Edward could maybe go here in between the Chocol Forges, actually make one. It's also going to be important that those have skylight access, otherwise they won't work. We can't turn them on again. Okay, there we go. I already made the molds for chisel and saw. Yep, just need to fire those. There's actually my bellows is in the chest. Alright, once we have yeah, the tools, I can at least continue with this room here. Okay, more progress to show. The floor here is finished and this is really taking shape here. I'm making some glass right now. So I just need to heat up sand in the charcoal forge because I want to put in some glass panes here for the windows. Yeah, we got chest storage now so we can put in charcoal, flux, um, empty molds, whatever, ingots. Here we got some fire starters on a tool rack and already prepared the space for the blast furnace. It's gonna take a while until they actually get it and here for the bloomery also got the stairs to get up that is gonna make more sense later you basically need to throw in your iron and charcoal into the bloomery and the same for the blast furnace this will be even higher so we probably need more stairs to actually get up there and yeah, not forget to keep some skylight access for the charcoal forges all right yeah looking good so I continued until I completely ran out of building materials. Got a ceiling in now, so I protect it from the rain. The storage got moved over into this corner. It's a bit larger now, more categories. So this should yeah, definitely last a while. Um, if at some point we actually need a bulk storage, I was thinking about having it in a basement. So there will also be a possibility to get downstairs, but a lot of digging would be required to actually have a basement. Then, yeah, got tool racks on the side. So here we have potential for two side rooms. Maybe we have a ladder working area. Then, yeah, I started with the kitchen area as well. Got multiple fireplaces. I guess if you have to cook a lot, then this definitely will make sense. Yeah, here we also <laughs> got tool racks. I invested in a proper kitchen knife now. And yeah, a couple chests here for bowls or other things. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Here we can maybe have some vessels, maybe here in this corner as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I've been really low on a lot of things now. And I actually got to turn on Charcoal Forge again. So I'm low on a lot of things. What annoys me the most right now is that I don't have a good way to, to get flux. Um, also low on that stuff again. Let's actually check the chest. Yeah, it's already all used up. Got 11 left basically. So I actually want to go out exploring again. Mostly also to find either sphalerite for tin or silver. So we can make bronze. Those would be upgraded tools that last longer and also mine stuff a bit faster. This would be yeah, some good progress we could make there. And definitely I'm going to look for kaolinite again. Actually have a list now of which stone types have it and graphite. And of course, um, looking for the right stone type to get some flux. Okay, um, yeah, those are the goals for next time. Right now, I'm making another prospector pick, new scythe, and a hammer. And I'm gonna make two more of those toolboxes so we can bring a lot of stuff home from yeah, the next journey. All right, so that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye.